What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Hybrid Network and yet another DC Extended Universe topic video. And this week we're going to be doing a little bit of analyzing as we take a look at the lightning color of the Flash in the DC Extended Universe. Now before explaining the DCEU version of his lightning, it only seems appropriate to explain the DC Comics version, as this is the mythology that the movies are going to be mostly interpreting. It should be noted that we are going to be focusing primarily on the New 52 in regards to approaching the Speed Force and its effects on well, speedsters of the DC Universe. Within the DC Universe, we see several different speedsters surrounded by a variety of lightning colors, including red, yellow, blue, black, and white. Now, while the color of a lightning might seem inconsequential at first glance, I know I certainly thought so at first, there's actually a deep and thorough reasoning behind it. Well, at least that's what former Flash artist Brett Booth described. So, going off his words, we'll begin breaking down the different colored lightning and how it connects back to the Speed Force within DC Comics continuity following Flashpoint. Starting off with Red, this is the slowest type of speedster, correlating with a relatively weak connection to the Speed Force. It's a connection that can be caused by either the Speed Force user being or using an artificial conduit, or simply just having a weak connection that needs a little bit more time to grow into the normal range, which is represented by yellow. New 52 Wally West has this type of connection, as did Barry at the beginning of the New 52. Yellow is for the standard type of speedster, correlating with an average or natural connection to the speed force. It's a connection that allows a speedster the ability to perform multiple abilities and feats that come typically with a speedster, allowing them to manipulate the speed force in a variety of ways. Everyone's favorite Silver Age speedster Barry Allen has this type of connection at this very moment. Now, blue is representative of a much higher connection to the Speed Force, with there currently being no known natural way to achieve this state of connectivity, although it is considered possible at the very least. The only currently known way to achieve this type of connection is for a speedster with an already standard connection to wear a special suit that enhances their ties to the ever-present Force, as demonstrated through the suit that the future Barry Allen utilized within the out-of-time arc of the Flash comics, white. This is without a doubt the fastest type of speedster. It represents a pure and absolute connection to the speed force. It's a type of connection that's believed to be attained from long periods of direct speed force exposure, most notably caused by physically entering the speed force itself. Most notably, those that possess white lightning are said to pull their powers directly from the speed force, which not only gives them the same abilities as those of other speedsters, but also the ability of time manipulation. More specifically, it gives the speedster in question the ability to speed up time around them, as described by Brett Booth. As we've seen in DC Rebirth and in the current Titans book, Wally West possesses the connection to the Speed Force, which makes sense given the amount of time he's spent trapped in there thanks to the mysterious individual that stole 10 years from the DC Universe. Now, black is where things get interesting. It would appear that the black lightning of the New 52 DC Rebirth Eobard Thawn could perhaps be of artificial origin, considering the red lightning that surrounds him as well. As stated previously, red lightning indicates either a weak connection to the Speed Force or an artificial one, as is the case in point for the New 52 Wally West. However, we're here to mostly talk about the black lightning that surrounds Thawne, and this is where things really do start to get interesting. You see, the thing to note with Eobard Thawne is that, to the adverse of speedsters with white lightning who speed up time around themselves, he has the power to actually slow down time around himself. Unfortunately, as it stands right now, we don't know too much about what black lightning indicates in relation to the speed force, as Brett Booth was a bit coy on that point. But, it is interesting to note that it has some form of time manipulation surrounding it, at least in the case of Eobard Thawne. Now, what does this all have to do with Ezra Miller's Flash? Well, honestly, not too much. Justice League screenwriter Chris Terrio mentioned he was doing a lot of research on all the various members of the Justice League, studying deep sea biology of the Mariana Trench for Aquaman, Diodorus of Sicily's account of the war between Atlanteans and Amazons, and then all the way up to the blue shift and red shifts of physics for The Flash. For those of you unfamiliar with the term, here's the lowdown. Blue shift and red shift are terms used to describe how the visible light, or any part of the electromagnetic spectrum, changes based on motion and distance relative to an observer, such as the color that a star takes on as it moves in space relative to us. We'll be focusing more on the spectrum of visible light, located neatly in between infrared waves and ultraviolet waves. Now, the idea of blue shift is basically that as an object is moving towards us, the visible light of said object is stated to shift towards the blue indigo end of the spectrum, undergoing an increase in wave frequency 
frequency but a decrease in wavelength. On the flip side, redshifting is basically the inverse, where as an object moves away from us, the visible light surrounding it shifts towards the red end of the visible light spectrum, basically decreasing in wave frequency but having an increase in wavelength. In relation to the flash, the speed at which he moves should indicate how he perceived the color of his lightning, technically his body too, but we're just gonna let that go. Knowing what we know about the visible light spectrum, we can actually make inferences as to the color that the flash's lightning would appear if we, you know, actually could keep up with him. So at about 20% the speed of light, as the flash moves towards us, the visible light of his lightning would undergo a blue shift, gaining a yellow hue as the light gains an increase in wave frequency. Taking it a step further, at 30% the speed of light, the lightning would look green, at 40% blue, and topping it off at 50%, he would appear violet. Now, if the flash were to go any faster, he'd be entering ultraviolet territory, which would bring him outside of the visible light spectrum and outside of what we can actually perceive. You know, if we could even see the flash moving at 40 or 50% the speed of light, which we can. Keep in mind that the visible flash from a lightning strike moves at a maximum of 30% the speed of light, so it just goes to show you just how fast the flash can move when he really puts his mind to it and believes in himself or friendship, or whatever it is that gets him to run so fast, I don't know. So, in the DCEU, the writers simply desire for the Flash to have a more scientifically accurate aesthetic, instead of being closer to the source material. If we're judging by the Justice League trailer footage, we can understand that the Flash's blue lightning is a visual proponent of the blue shifting phenomenon within the electromagnetic spectrum. And simply put, he moves fast. That feels like an oversimplification. Of course, as any DC fan worth his salt knows, it can all be boiled down to one simple statement. The Speed Force just does what it does, shut up, don't think about it. But, that's actually going to wrap up this video. What do you guys think about this, and do you like the more scientific approach that the DC Extended Universe is taking with Ezra Miller's Flash? Let me know in the comments down below, I'm actually really interested to see what you guys have to say, and if you want to see more content like this, go ahead and subscribe to the Hybrid Network and get access to all of our original content as it comes out. Thanks for listening guys, and we'll see you next time on the next DC Extended Universe Topic Video.